Well, today I want to share with you on a topic that's uh, really misunderstood and many Christians struggle with this. And that's really about how does the Lord feel when we doubt him? Uh, because Christians are led to believe that they have to be perfect, they have to always be believing, and that if they, uh, in some senses, doubt the Lord or, or have any sorts of questions, uh, that the Lord is displeased. And this is not true. You know, what God is looking for is people that have an open heart towards him, because he knows that we are human. He knows that we're not perfect uh, in our physical bodies. He knows that we have growth. You know, even Jesus grew. If you look, it says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Uh, and I want to show you something really cool from the story of John the Baptist that you may not have seen before. If we go over here, uh, this is in Luke 1, uh, 41 to 44. And this is talking about when Jesus uh, was, uh, uh, when uh, John was in Elizabeth's womb. And it says, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, Jesus's mother, that the babe, John, leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit when Mary's voice was heard. And then Elizabeth, the mother, spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you, Mary, among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe, John, leapt in my womb for joy. So John the Baptist knew the voice of Mary by the Spirit and leapt in the womb because of joy, right? So excited because this was John's purpose. And then we see over here uh, in John 1, it says uh, uh, there was Pharisees that were criticizing uh, John and saying, you know, why do you baptize people? And John in verse 26 uh, over here, this is in uh, John 1 verse 26, John answered them saying, I baptize with water. But there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who, coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethesda before the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he, he's pointing to him, this is he of whom I said, I've been telling you this, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me, he's recognizing that Jesus is the Christ, because he's saying, even though Jesus physically, bodily came, he was born after me, he has been here before me, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel, therefore I came baptizing with water, and John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit. This is John saying that this is how he recognized that, that Jesus is the Messiah. It says, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. So the Spirit in the Old Testament would come and go. But this, the Holy Spirit came like a dove and remained on Jesus. In verse 33 says, I did not know him, but he who sent me, notice that he is capitalized, in other words, God, who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. In other words, he is saying, I'm telling you that this is the Messiah. John is letting everyone know that the stuff that he's been telling them about, I mean, this, this is when, not when John started his ministry. John had been in ministry for a long time. And John, is his whole life is all about building up to this moment where he ushers in the Messiah. And so he's leapt in his mother's womb when he heard the voice of Mary. And then his whole life's work is about baptizing people and calling them to repentance because the Messiah is coming. And then John sees the Messiah and says, this is him. This is the Lamb of God. So imagine what a huge moment this is for John and for those people that knew John. It's like, this is it. This is my life's been building up to all this. So John's feeling awesome, like it's come to pass. And for many of us, you know, we get born again. We have a new uh, outlook on life. And then something happens to us and we lose hope. We lose faith. We start to question, where is God in this? And then the enemy comes and he starts to pound us and say, see, you're not a real Christian. See, you're not a real believer. And then we go, oh, man, if only I had the same faith as the disciples. If only I had the same faith as John. If only I had the same stuff. Maybe if I could see those miracles, maybe then I would believe. But it's not true. 
because everyone has doubts, even those people. Let me show you something, and this is going to encourage you because for many people, they think that just if you would have been there with Jesus, you wouldn't have had a problem doubting. Not true. Okay, so we just read John bore witness. He says, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Then John ends up in prison. Okay, later on in the story, he gets arrested. He ends up in prison. And let me show you what happens. This is in Matthew 11, verse 1. Now, it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and preach in other cities. And when John, this is John the Baptist, and when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? John is doubting now. He's saying, are you the Messiah? Are you the one that I've been waiting for? Or do we wait for someone else? What an incredible statement. I mean, just before John was saying, this is him. I can testify. I saw the Holy Spirit. I saw it with my eyes. And I didn't see it for the first time. I saw it in my mind before because God told me, this is how you'll know that he's the Christ because the Holy Spirit will descend like a dove and remain upon him. And John says, I even saw that with my eyes and it was foretold to me by God. And so therefore, this is him. And then John's circumstances changed. John went through some rough stuff and he's looking around going, God, really? I'm in prison now? I mean, after all this, after my whole life was about ushering in the Messiah, and I thought I had ushered him in, and then I ended up in prison? How does that make sense? John was so focused on his circumstance that he missed the point of who the Messiah was. And what an incredible statement to say, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Is there, is there another guy? Because surely if you were the guy, I wouldn't be in prison. And look at Jesus' answer in verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. In other words, he's saying, you know all the signs of the Messiah because the Messiah was foretold to do these things, to heal people, right? to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to preach the gospel. John knew that these things were of the Messiah. So he's saying, so what, what Jesus is saying uh, uh, to the disciples to go back and tell John is, He's reminding John of all the things that he knew were the signs. And then what's the last thing? He says, in verse 6, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. John got offended. He was like, if you're the Messiah, why am I in jail? And oftentimes, that's what you'll hear from Christians. If God is a loving God, why did X happen to me or why did Y happen to me? If God is a good God and God loves me, why did I lose my job? Why did my child die? Why did my parent die? Why did... My business closed. Why, 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 why? And then they're looking at their circumstances and they're saying that because of this circumstance, therefore God is or isn't. And this is exactly the trap that John fell into. And Jesus is saying to him, look at what the signs of the Messiah were. Oh, and by the way, blessed is he, in other words, you, John, who is not offended because of me. As in blessed are you if you don't get offended in Jesus because you ended up in jail. Jesus is, is reminding him of those things. And then you would think, well, so obviously Jesus was displeased with John. Not at all. Jesus understood what John was going through. And look at this in verse 7. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitude concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. So he's, he's elevating John now. He's not talking him down. He's not saying, hey, this unbeliever. He's saying, look at who John was. A prophet, yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare the way for me. Watch this in verse 11. This is what, John is, uh, this is what Jesus is saying about John. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. In other words, he's saying that who's been born of women? Everyone's been born of women before John, Moses, Elijah, all of those people that we revere, Abraham, they were all born of women. And he's saying John is greater than all of those. And then he ends by saying, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, greater than John the Baptist. In other words, what Jesus is saying, John the Baptist was the greatest of all men born of women, but he who is even least in the kingdom of God, if you're a born again believer, 
even if you're the most lowly born again believer, you're even greater than John the Baptist. And I'll share with you in another lesson why that's the case. But my point is this, just because you have doubts, just because sometimes you question your situation doesn't mean that God is displeased with you. That's the enemy coming to hurt you, coming to condemn you. You know, the, the enemy comes but to steal, kill and to destroy. And so if you feel condemned, don't feel condemned, but just go back to the truth of who God is. Your circumstances are not the barometer of God's love. Your circumstances are not the way that you judge whether God loves you or not. It says that God loved us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And yes, of course, we want God to intervene in our situations. And that's why we pray. And that's why we speak the word. And that's what we believe. But let's not get into the trap of equating God's love with our circumstances, because that's just not true. That is not true. We live in a fallen world. There are challenges in this world. And if you start to equate God's love based on your circumstances, then you'll only ever feel God's love based on as good as your circumstance is. And that is not wise. That is not the gospel. And so, but I want to encourage you that you see, even, even the guy that was the greatest born of women up until that point, he had all the revelation about it. He, I mean, he, I mean, he had everything going for him. His whole life was about proclaiming the gospel. And when things got tough, he was like, are you actually the Messiah? So my point is, even if you would have been there, John saw the spirit of God like a dove descending on Jesus. And yet even he doubted. So when we think, oh, now if I was there and I would have seen the miracles, I wouldn't have believed. No, you wouldn't. You would have been just like everybody else. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Don't get discouraged. Be encouraged that the God of this universe, he understands you. He knows you. And the best thing to do in those moments when you doubt God or when you run into trouble and, and if you feel like, you know, God, I should have believed more, just say, thank you, God, that you love me. Thank you that you've forgiven me. Thank you that I'm born again. Thank you that my, my place is sealed. Thank you that my Holy, your Holy Spirit is in me. Thank you, Father. And let faith rise up on the inside of you rather than condemnation and doubt because God is a good God and he knows us. He created us and he knows us. So I just want you to be encouraged today that no matter what you're going through, there are others that have gone through it as well. And in the end, God understands and God loves us because he is a good God.